Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to extract a little more structure from your source material. Now today we're going to be tracing and I'm not ashamed of it. If you think that tracing is cheating, then you may be missing out on one of the easiest and most helpful means of discovery. That being said, tracing should be used primarily as an exercise. Your ultimate goal should be to create something new from your source material. So if you're building a portfolio or doing work for a client, make sure that you don't claim traced material as your own unless you have specific permission from the owner of the original content. But for practicing structure, tracing is an incredibly helpful exercise. Because we don't have to dedicate all the brain power that duplication requires, we can let our mind focus on other important skills like line weight and line quality and structure. And while we're drawing, our brain is quietly recording valuable data about the real world that is almost impossible to invent on our own. If you want to learn more about how to trace with purpose, make sure to check out my new drawing method called the Art Diet, and specifically the page on tracing. Okay, let's get to it. So here you can see I've traced over this foot. And because this is going to be the basis for a quick painting, I really want to be able to identify where the major planes are and where those planes turn and create form. This is best done with photographs that have a lot of contrast and have a clear light direction. But as you can see in this case, the lighting is pretty even and it's very soft. And so we don't really have a good sense of where the shape changes are, which makes it more difficult to trace out the forms. So what I've done here is duplicated this layer and created a second layer that's just for my drawing reference that exaggerates where the highlights, midtones, and shadows are. Let me show you how to do that. So I'll go ahead and delete that layer. I'll select my reference layer come up here to the menu, duplicate layer, and we'll be applying a tonal correction. So we'll go to edit, tonal correction, and level correction. Now the way levels works is it maps all the values in your image to a range that you might think of like 0 to 100. 0 being black and 100 being white. So if we drag our shadows marker all the way to the right, let's say around, let's say here would be 50% and here would maybe be 75%, so what it's doing is that it's taking anything under the 75 range and just turning it into black. The same thing works with the white. If I take the white all the way to the left, what it's doing is it's saying, take any values that are greater than 25% and then turn them complete white. So we can use this to our advantage to create a temporary image that exaggerates the highlights and the shadows in a way that we can trace it with more information. So I'm just gonna take our shadows, bring this in, take our highlights, bring that back, and just play around until I find a range here that more clearly gives me an indication of where these plane changes are. So we can do maybe something like this. Yeah, something like that. And now we have a nice clear flat plane on the top of the foot. We have clear indications where those planes turn and then turn into the side planes. So I'm just gonna hit okay. We'll give ourselves a new layer and we can go ahead and uh, reduce the opacity of that and then just start drawing our shapes. So because this is going to be for a painting, I'm really looking for those flat plane changes to help me. So for example here, I'm going to draw in where that uh, highlight changes its face there, some shadows, get those nails in. And again, even though I'm doing this fairly quickly, I'm also thinking about structure, you know, what these toes look like, the rounding of those shapes. In fact, doing this uh, tracing before I paint is actually helping me understand a little bit about what the shape of this fit looks like. So I can kind of see clearly that nice side plane there, these round shapes, and this uh, looks kind of like a ball here, right? Where that I'm kind of imagining, you know, a sphere right there where that angle is. So. Kind of indicating that. I see another plane change here, right, that kind of does that. So I might just, yeah, these are just like notes, notes for myself for when I paint this in. Kind of see this uh, foot do that kind of a shape there. And I'm imagining, you know, these nice round blocks. Good. So now when I turn it off, I have a pretty nice mapping of where all my planes are. And this is really gonna go a long way when I put my values in for painting. So to recap, duplicate your reference layer, go to edit, tonal correction, level correction, 
and crunch your shadows and your highlights to a point where you can clearly see the plane changes and use that as a mapping for your drawing. All right, I hope that was helpful. And don't forget to check out rubenlara.com tracing to learn more about the art diet. See you next time.